Dan, good to have you in the studio. It's good morning. What's good morning? What's on your mind today, my friend? What's oh, what's yeah. the topic of uh, conversation for you today? Want to, what's on my mind or the topic? Because that's um, a different day. Wait, let me. Um, I tell you what, so I, I need to do. I need to refrain that and let's talk about the. Topic. Well, you what's have your topic? T- I think you said what's on t- your mind is always the scary thing for me for had, some reason. We have ten or twelve minutes. We're supposed to talk about whatever the topic isn't, right? We're supposed to I sort think of that's the way we've been going for goes. a while now, and I'm not sure any listener is appreciating maybe not. that. Well, he, so, maybe we, we can talk about one of these days. We should talk about Bob Dylan. I was telling you, there's a Bob Dylan pop podcast. Oh talking, yeah. I think it's Talking Bob. Yeah. Well, in one the last these days, in the last should... few sessions, we talked we talked about music in a general sense and touch on different yeah. things. Rick Ocasek from last week, we mm-hmm. talked about. His his death and so forth. So now today it's Bob Dylan to start off our show. Well, I think we should devote a couple of shows to it because Bob Dylan, man, is I uh, he, he's the closest we have to to Shakespeare. You know, Nobel Prize, National Award Award winner, uh, French Medal of Honor. Um, Bakes really good cupcakes. I mean, the guy's like just you yeah. Know, he can do it. Got, he can do it all, he's, and he's done it all right. He's you know, and, and he's, he's still going. He he's is. I saw strong, him in right? Macon like about uh, almost a year ago. Wow. So okay. I'm in Macon. Okay. All right. All right. There's not a lot of things in Macon. In fact, if you ever if you're feeling bad about Columbus, Georgia, go visit Macon. Go visit Macon. <laughs> really puts things in perspective. All right, let's say something nice about Macon. You know the Allman brothers, okay? James Brown. I mean, yeah. uh, been a lot of concerts yeah. over there at the Civic Center and back in the old days. Mm. Probably not true anymore, but hey, mm. it, at one point it was a music capital of the state. Yeah, might, I'm just a, saying that. Um, I think. Um, Blind Willie McTell is also from uh, from Macon. There you go. You All wanna, right. So yeah. so what is it about Dylan? You would like because this you just said we talk for ten minutes before we get to the topic, which is not a good thing. I'm not sure that that's what <laughs> maybe, we maybe, need maybe, to be doing. Well, well maybe we, maybe we could just sort of talk about Dylan another point because I think what might be interesting is a I, I, I'm obsessed with Dylan. In fact, I've probably seen him in concert at least twelve times. I have probably. Um, I don't know, 500 uh, Dylan bootlegs, easy. I got like, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, I got, um, like I just got can lots you say, of stuff. Can you say bootleg these days uh, without getting into trouble? Well, that, I don't actually, know there's what now a, 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 uh, an official bootleg series. I think we're up to 12 or 13 for Dylan. Oh, say, so. So, so bootleg has become sort mm. of uh, okay now, uh, in yeah. a sense. Uh, well, I remember... Uh, the first Dylan concert I went to, you could, you know, there'd be guys walking around selling the bootlegs of other concerts, and it was cool. It was like, you know, it was like, it was just super cool. You got people hanging out these things, and I remember the guy was like selling bootlegs, and I yelled across the um, the parking lot, "Hey, bootleg guy!" And when I said it, the guy ducked behind a car. Well, um, evidently that had something to do with somebody selling something out of the trunk <laughs> of their car, and that's not always a good place did, to they get did, your they music. Did, uh, I'm not sure yeah. about that. Actually, I think uh, because security was so tight, most of the merchandise he was having to store rectally. So that, that really I'm, I'm made sorry, for I'm trying to give some instructions <laughs> over here to our producer. But you know what? Um, I've lost this you'd conversation be, a minute ago, so I'm not. How I'm many not, CDs? A grown man can store like that. I'm just saying. I you, well, that is. You, you that, give me a number. That guy was he he doubled you know, up. <laughs> I kind of feel like one of our <laughs> listeners would. I just kind of fade out, or fade away from what's happening, and I'll, I'll be back in a minute. And these guys are going to say something about psychology and mental health, or one of those kind of things that might be helpful to me. So I'm kind of like well, that person. I just right amused now, listen. myself. I went someplace I thought was funny, which is really. I, I'm an audience of one. But, right. Okay, but, <laughs> We've established that on the show about narcissism a while yeah, back. Yeah, if you want to know more, go back to that episode. That'll tell you what's happening. Well, here's, um, here's, here's what I was thinking about. The, the topic could be uh, there's a, there's a, 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 it's a, it's a thing, it's a, it's a concept that has been bounced around, especially recently, this notion of cancel culture. Okay. All right, cancel culture. Mm-hmm. I think that may have something to do with social media in particular, but maybe it's a larger thing. I'm not sure. Well, about well, that. we got to be careful because even before we dive into this, and you know, we want to be able to tie this some way to uh, psychology or, um, you know, uh, 
Yeah, the mental health world, the things that or we talk about on topic. I can widen them. We'll, we'll, we'll find some way to, <laughs> to tie it to things. But, okay, I know. But, but yeah, um, I got it. I'm, I'm with you so far, maybe. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how this turns out. I just out. like saying the word duodenum. Yes. You of do. all the parts of the anatomy, you just say that. You just feel good. Just say duodenum. Okay. You just feel. It you does know, something for the. the just, you just feel good. So, okay. uh, all right. not we'll like appendix. Then. That just doesn't feel good. Don't, and I, don't, I don't like saying no. that. No. It's not a, not a word I'm. I'm uh, so, so, but before we dive into this, we've got to think about this because here's, here's, here's the issue. It's a, it's a concept that already is problematic the minute because I think where it was given a name, it already has sort of a political vertices. Right, so, right. Well, because, everything seems to be it's a, well, sort of pervasive, the politics, the mm. tribalism, the split in the mm. U.S., well, all of those things are happening, but that's a kind of a pervasive thing that it is. seems to enter itself in just almost every conversation it um you know it, it, it is certainly uh, despite his um his his claim to have bring the nation together since uh since trump it, it seems to have gotten worse oh i'm i think it's uh, yeah i'm it's pretty gotten, much uh, down with this it's gotten worse, sorry, sorry, it's gotten worse. I, I'm, I'm however an eternal optimist and i believe we're going to work mm-hmm. through this and we're going to come out of the other side of things and we're going to be more cohesive uh mm-hmm. maybe only one but that's mm-hmm. how i'm thinking mm-hmm. We're gonna see. We'll see. Yeah, what I'm happens. a, uh, I'm an external pessimist. I just want everybody else to be sad. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, I like that comment. That was good. That's, it has some real meaning behind it somewhere. It did. It did. It did. I don't know where it came from. We'll we'll work on that in a new show. I, somewhere, trust me. So. Nothing else from here on out is gonna be uh, in any way <laughs> no, meaningful. Nothing so, as that profound that as that. In, that in was, it's all downhill so. from there. But me, this notion of cancel culture, sort of yeah. in, in a similar vein with um, social justice warrior, these are labels that often get, um, and I think in right. some ways they reflect an attempt to understand our current societal growing pains, right? Right. So if we approach this with um, uh, with our uh, hearts and minds open to this, what is this notion of cancel culture? And it, it's recently been in the, I don't know if you, you ever watch the news? You watch that news stuff? Yeah, I see the news if all the time. Like yeah, it's, it's coming you in like various forms. You like those Fox and Friends? Do. You ever watch those? I, I do. As a matter of fact, fact uh, uh, it, doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't help uh, in the way I think it will when my wife and I are watching the news and I go, okay, we watch this channel. Let's look at Fox and see what mm-hmm. they're saying mm-hmm. about the same topic. And it doesn't go well. So we have to, <laughs> I can only take it for just a moment and does, then we have to does, go back. Yeah. But we know what's happening there. All right, yeah, so yeah. I think it, well, let me put it another way. Mm-hmm. I really think we need to see all these sides, both okay. sides and all the other sides, mm-hmm. that, that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's my attempt at mm-hmm. kind of seeing everything around well, and Well, I, I, I can imagine about five minutes of Fox News before I uh, set a living thing on fire, usually. Uh, <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> really, you know. No, we're I not doubt gonna, something in, No, that's in, not. No, we really, don't set, set it on fire. Set anything on fire is probably <laughs> so the best way to go. But uh, there might be some work to do there, but I want, <laughs> it's good, not the good, time good. for it now. Um, uh, that is Steve Ducey. That's a guy on there, right? Ducey? Yeah. Right, Steve Ducey. Ducey. What's his name? Yes, I like that. I just I just like saying Ducey. It, that's the sort okay. Of guy. I was thinking you were going to say somewhere, but that's good. You I've held never it in been there. in a fraternity. Never. And in fact, I don't think I really would fit in one. I'm sure somewhere out there's a fraternity that you know might have a me shaped hole in it I could fill, but I haven't found it yet. But if I were in a fraternity, fraternity, I'd want to be in a fraternity with a guy whose last name was Ducey. You know, because you'd be go out. Who's, who are you hanging out with? Do, me and Ducey. Me Ducey, and Ducey. Yeah, do it, some sounds, it, sounds, it sounds. It sounds right. Now, the thing I've read about in the paper uh, just this last couple of days was this notion that there's some debate on the Fox and Friends or some of the other shows they have on there where people Shep, are questioning. Yeah, Shep Smith right. and Tucker Carlson. Right. Which, by the way, you know, any time I'm starting to like... Um, Here we go. <laughs> I swear, what? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know what you're about to say, what, 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 but I know... Whenever I start the... to really, you know, start like um, like um, um, getting really down on Hitler, I turn on Tucker Carlson. You know, he's not such a bad guy, that Hitler guy. Oh, you know? okay. Now, I'm just see, saying that's, that's... I, this is one of those things where I think we just cross over the line. I'm trying to keep us in a boundary somewhere. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's but, see what I'm saying. Uh, okay. All right, there we go. You had a point. I had a point. Can we point. come back? So so there, there is a political vertices about this. And there, right. I, I believe that the place to start, and I think I was going to mention sort of in the news that right. there was a comedian that had been hired on the new uh, new. Uh, Season of SNL. Right, that's right. Uh, that's Saturday Night Live for those folks right. who, who aren't hip. That's a good, the SNL. Go. And so um, 
um, he was uh, he actually had been hired, and someone started looking at some of his earlier um, uh, podcasts and things he had done, and apparently he said some what could be construed as rel- racist things about right. Asians. About Asians, that's right. Yes, right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And so as a result, there was an outcry, and he lost his job. Yeah. And so there's this notion that right now that there are, um, and, and you could go all the way back to say Woody Allen, that somehow he may be, uh, his, I think his last film, uh, his he had a contract to be doing a series of films with Netflix. That fell through, I think. And his last few films have not had any distribution in the United States. And so there, there's all this sort of thing that there are these, um, the, and um, celebrities and folks. Um, right. Um, it could really kind of be in their career. It stops yeah. all the progress, the sponsorship, um, all the things. Yeah, that, Neil that deGrasse kind of... Tyson, I think, has recently had some some issue around this sort of thing. Right. Um, uh, Barney, the dinosaur. I... I'm not familiar <laughs> with that that one. Uh, but so what, you, what you're saying is that someone um, comes out, they, they are in the news, mm-hmm. and then people find something that maybe they have said in the past, that's happened a lot lately, mm-hmm. and, and then all of a sudden it blows up. What happens in that? What well, you... it, I, here's, here's where I think we, if we, we can come at this several ways. And I think one way to think about it is that let's be generous to the, the construct for a moment before we offer any, any criticism. Sure. If we see this in some ways a reflection of our growing pain as a culture, that um, there is a way in which the table at which we sit is expanding, and more and more folks who haven't had a place in the table now can sit. Sure, uh, more voices are heard, gay, and it's a good thing. Gay, gay and lesbian brothers and sisters, um, tran- transsexual brothers and sisters, uh, uh, Jew- uh, uh, gender fluid folk. There's really just sort of, um, um, if we could find a way to, to take Tucker Carlson off the table we could but uh, but uh, he, there, he gets a voice too <laughs> yeah I guess he gets right, a voice that's too that's always that so there is a so as the table grows there, there is there, there is um, there's some growing pains in this sure and uh, there have been some corrections possibly over corrections as a okay. way to be able to increase the size of this table and I think critics would say that has been an over correction you okay. know that suddenly you know okay. I was even I was even talking to a friend the other day and they were telling me that in a group that they hang out with that suddenly they can feel sort of marginalized because some of the voices there really sort of pigeonhole them as if they may maybe um, represent sort of um, a privileged white person right and mm-hmm. so there's you know so there's th- 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 there's that element and um, I guess technically I would, would would I fall under privileged white person I think there's a little privilege for all uh, <laughs> yeah, but, white, yeah, maybe that's, white. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's kind so. of an issue. I, mm-hmm. But but you're saying that these things, it almost sounds like you're saying it gets overblown with all the voices in here. It can there can be this rage of for for another person mm-hmm. um, injury more than the person themselves in some ways. Well, but it, there's a big reaction to it, I this guess. This is where I'd like to generate some ambivalence because um, I think that's been sort of a more conservative talking point that somehow that this represents um, an overcreaction. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not sure about that because we've got to be, I, we have to be careful because it's very easy when, when someone has a new place at the table and they're only beginning to be able to recognize the voice they have and they're beginning to speak, it's really easy to silence them. It's really easy to send a message that they need to go back, and it's really easy right. to stop this nascent progress. And my worry would be that if when we begin to talk about this as an overcorrection, we talk about you know that these are just angry people, and even right. a concept like uh, cancel uh, culture could be, if we're not careful, a way to shut people down who really need to speak. Like right. for instance, yes. um, I, I don't know about you, but we talk about you know. Um, uh, racist humor I, I can remember um, um, Jerry Lee Lewis routines where he mm-hmm. would do this mocking sort of Asian uh, stereotype oh um, yeah yeah, uh, yeah I mean we, we, we've you know and not being Asian myself I would see that and I would think it was funny and laugh about it without any consideration that this that this could be an act of marginalization this could be um, uh, not just a micro but a ma- macro aggression Toward people who were who were watching this, and as right. society has shifted, we were no longer allowing this to happen. Then, um, uh, and and we're still in the process of combing through this because there are still right. places on the planet where th- this notion of blackface, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, that is another example of how, for the longest time, that was acceptable. Now it no longer is, and I think I think the fact that it 
isn't acceptable. It's not some sort of political correctness going awry. But this is a necessary shift. We're starting to think about our impact on other people in a way that we didn't before. So I want to be able to hold on to that and keep that momentum going. Yeah, that makes sense. The idea of empathy, and, and mm-hmm. we talked about that many times on the show, the, the idea of kind of seeing it from another person's view, kind of feeling it from their point of view. What mm-hmm. would it be like if you were in their shoes? Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that needs to grow. That, that's a positive thing for us. And I think it would be an easy thing to get in the way of if we're not too careful. But there's a but in this. You know, so if we, if we take critics of this notion of cancel culture, that suddenly that there is, as opposed to voices being heard, we want to shut other people down. So in some ways, uh, the idea that the table that we're at is one of, it doesn't grow, we're going to have to replace. Somebody gets kicked off if somebody else comes on. And that's not what we're really looking for here. I mean, I was joking about Tucker Carlson and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but sure. uh, our um, our conservative brothers and sisters have a place in the table. They should be able to speak, even if it's things that, that we are uncomfortable with. They, write that they, they have a place at that table. The catch is, though, how do we find the right sort of balance? How do we find a place where the um, one side can speak and the other be heard and the other side can speak? And I don't think we're there yet. I think part of Roseanne, another example of what right. we'd say cancel culture, she yeah. um, she was fired, and that happened quickly, and she they was had, done. They it was uh, over. James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, he was removed from the project and placed back on. There's all this sort of there's lots of movement and attempt to be able to to answer, to change, and to grow, but. Um, I think it's, I think it's really interesting. You know, you mentioned the the Saturday Night Live uh, person they just hired, and they were about to. He's coming on the show. He's going to be great. They looked up and they found some uh, remarks that he made about Asians. Mm-hmm. Um, I re- also remember in the show in, in, in reading just recently that Andrew Yang, the person that's running for president, mm-hmm. uh, made a comment about that and said he said basically, paraphrase, that wasn't so bad. Give the guy a break. <laughs> yeah. And then then he was hit with this cancel culture notion by others, mainly white, I think, in that mm-hmm. group, that sort of wanted to cancel him. Mm-hmm. And he's the person that the insult was uh, uh, aimed at, but it's somebody else feeling more hurt than the person mm-hmm. who is targeted. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a strange phenomenon, I think. It's almost like we're taking on somebody else's hurt more than they feel it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to make of that. Well, but, but let's let's dive a little deeper than maybe uh, l- let's get a little into psychology. We were supposed to do that, right? This, yeah, this I think supposed that's to what this we up. generally do, yes. So, and there are a couple of models here. There's a way to sort of think about this in the same way that we would a therapy session, but maybe we won't go there yet. But okay. you said that what, why would suddenly, maybe some of the folks who are driving cancel culture, maybe it may not be the, um, um, the individuals who are most directly impacted by this. Right. It may have been not right. Asian Americans who were who are driving this, but um, uh, uh, Caucasian folk. Right. And if that's the case, then, so what is going on there? Is this, there's this notion of, um, uh, of white guilt. Okay. There's notion of, um, um, we've talked about this guy, Zizek, before, right? Yes. We have. By the way, has a new book out called Sex and the Sublime. It just came out last week. Okay, I'm going to have to get you to read it and tell me what it says. I've tried to, I've listened to this guy. He's amazing. He's wonderful. First, I I mean, I love this guy. He just, he helps us understand things at a a different level. He brings it all in together. Uh, But... um, I won't say anymore. He does. Stuff. He does that. And the That's International Zizek Conference is going to be coming in at Athens, Georgia, uh, sometime next year. I'm going to try to uh, send Athens, in, uh, Georgia. Yeah, it used to be University in Cincinnati for a while, but it's now moved closer okay. to home. Well, we we may so, do a remote. Um, we could uh, a hopefully got therapy a, from there. That would be great. We get him on the a show. Of years ago, and I'm going to I'm going to come up with I got to come up with a paper that's sexy. You got to you always got to come up with something sexy. So I yeah, you think do. About it. Yeah, it has to grab the headlines, or they don't put it's gotta, it out it's there. Grab the That's headlines. part of the problem with with uh, what we're talking about too. What you say in these cancel culture situations is it has to make headlines, and uh, that's part of the problem. Everybody's grabbing that fifteen seconds of fame. It seems. I think uh, nowadays everybody everybody's going to get at least five minutes. Maybe that's You're uh, going to get five minutes. That's so way too long. I'm so thinking so, for yeah. some people. I some know. people don't. Right. Know. So this notion of like. Um, um, why they may be overinvested, and uh, Zizek talks a bit about how there is um, a, a, a subtle 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm making a uh, technical move here. Sorry, Man, that's, that's good. It's go. good. We just want to make sure we get to hear I, this, whatever's coming next. Dude. I I know, that sure. way. But the, uh, I, it, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt It's going to be an iambic pentameter. Here it's going to sound See, like I it's going to be a... Anytime I project, I know we have to come back on course. So <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, I'll just wait, and we can do that. But so, Jack. There's this notion that um, they, they all talk about this notion of white guilt and whatnot, but there's a way in which um, he, he talks about that you can sort of separate the racism of the left and the racism of the right. And the racism of the right is often highly projective. It's, you know, these people are, are this and that, uh, pejorative, dirty, lazy, whatever the case may be. Right. But the racism of the left is, does the opposite. If the racism of the right is, um, diminishes, um, the racism of the left expands. It's like they talk about how wonderful the Native Americans were. They didn't. They had all these. Why can't we return to what they had? Uh, it's as if you suddenly uh, iron out all the humanity, and they become an ascendant sort of principle you have to aim for. Right. And right. so uh, the, the, when he talks about that, he said, "But it's 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 uh, it's it's just a, the same form of the same part objectifying. Yeah. You're no longer okay. seeing the person as a whole person. Right. And so I wonder about part of what may drive this is that you know. It's it's as if um, the message they're sending maybe to Asian Americans who are saying, you know, give the guy a break. That's, you know, okay. He right. said them dumb stuff. Let, you know, chastise him, all that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about shame in a second, too. It's oh, rolling yeah. all this. But yeah, I'll refer you back to an early episode, but <laughs> yes, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> but several of them, I'm ashamed of all of them, really. So <laughs> there's so a lot like of shame. There's a lot of shame. <laughs> Ongoing theme here. For a lot reason. of shame sure. and all this sort of thing. We're going to need to call a psychologist <laughs> yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, right? but, um, <laughs> I um, so uh, uh, this notion that in in that um, by um, you won't even allow the individual in question to be able to uh, feel the things that they feel. Instead, you 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 color over it with if if one colors in in black, the other colors literally in white, whitewashing everything in a way. Pun intended, and that mm-hmm. we have to um, we have to be worried about a pull in either direction, and this is where because you know the other guy I like talking about that Wilfred Beyond. Yeah, you ever talk about Beyond that guy, guy, that Beyond yeah, guy? Yeah, I like his first name. Uh, yeah, you know Wilfred. You don't you don't hear a lot of <laughs> you know, Wilfreds. Not a lot of new you know, I was going to name my babies, son Wilfred. <laughs> that's right. And my wife hit me. Oh, so she you like, tried, and she, she said like, she corrected. She said okay. that's not going to happen, Wilfred. I thought that'd be cool. Yeah, but um, instead good, we, you yeah. know, we ended up calling him. Don't know. I don't know where this joke is going. I do Think. know your son. Think. 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 That's my son's name, Think. It's a, um, that it's masculine. It's quick and masculine. I wanted something that was rapid and masculine and sort of like a sort of like a, a well timed punch, you know? Think. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's None a, of that makes sense. Okay, I just want to say that that's not your son's <laughs> name. I know your son. This is not right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But, yeah, get uh, a little. For the effort of the pun, I think we'll keep going. <laughs> okay, yeah, there right. we go. So, 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 but, but man, Will Forbian talks about how, and there's a famous. Well, he talks about that. He, he was one of the first guys to study groups, by the way. Group process. That's okay. Was yeah, yeah. So he, he talks about these, um, and um, a group that's unable to think. He calls it a basic assumption group. They often get stuck on a thing without thinking. And that, that um, um, in these moments that we move to what we could, in a pejorative sense, call cancel culture, could be a moment of not thinking. Because right. um, what we see, seem to be stuck in is the idea that we either, we either have this individual or we get rid of them. As if there's nothing in between. Right, right, yeah. As if yeah. there's not the possibility of opening up a conversation and saying, okay, how do we reach out to people who may not be at the place we want them yet? How do we help them to grow as the culture changes as opposed to simply um, eliminating them? Right. How do we actually have that that um, adult – and this is the word that's been used sometimes. We need some adults in the room. Mm-hmm. But, but that adult conversation where you have a different opinion than I have and we mm-hmm. talk about it. And, and obviously I'm right. To, but I'll allow you to I have know, that different see, opinion. Exactly. <laughs> you're just demonstrating exactly what the, what uh, the know, problem but is. But you can here. still talk. I, it, yeah. It's just as opposed to you know. Um, I won't listen to you. I'm ready for <laughs> to say something I've got in my head, and I don't. Whenever you stop, I will say <laughs> that. Right. <laughs> so that's the con. But the but you know the conversation is difficult, and I don't think we have any models or really good models of a, of that conversation where I respect you. I'm going to listen to what you have mm-hmm. to say. I'm going to do something thoughtful in my response back as opposed to sort of cutting you off. And I don't think we have a good model for that yet. And I don't, I, well, I wish can I more say something that's going to make some, some people upset? <laughs> because I think 
that whatever his strengths and weaknesses were, Obama was a good model of that. Okay. He okay. seemed to have a capacity to be able to stay calm and collected and to be able yeah, to be fine, um, example, contemplative yeah. in the face of things. And right, but it, it, it's, it's only isolated in some, um, in some situations where the average people mm -hmm. on the street are taking up camps, one camp versus the other camp. And uh, who, who's in the middle of that? I don't mm -hmm. see that many people. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if it just has to do with politics, and politics has sort of forced us into this, this black mm -hmm. and white idea, mm -hmm. or um, we just – all right, so I'm making a, uh, a call for more – a conversation well, see, and listening to the other person. And, and, and I don't, you know, I, I think, um, and, and I'm a little, we, we, Stephen Pinker, that, that yeah. guy who says, he, he says yeah. things are getting better. Great book. And I wonder if, 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 um, if our current conflicts are actually a result of getting better. I mean, I think now it's, there is more acceptance, more inclusiveness for folks of different genders. Yes, that's for, true. Um, mm. For all sorts of folks. Now, it, it, it may seem less for religious conservatives and conservatives in general because these shifts do, um, do, do generate conflict for them. And, um, and, and I hate that, but I, I, don't, I don't see any other way out of it. I don't see right. that there isn't, you know, that, there, that this, is, this is a place of growth. Right. Um, also, we sort of think about this notion of shame when we talk about it. Um, you know, we, we, we did a podcast on this. Yes, we did. And how shame has a point. That, the, that there is a reason we have shame, and that it is, um, it from an evolutionary biological perspective, it, it has a utility and a use. Mm -hmm. And one of the things it does is it is a, it is a rapid way to correct action. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah. there are certain actions that may only be corrected if they, um, if they have a, um, a societal impingement, if there is a consequence. Uh, and it has to be a, a societal one. When a when a mom shames a child, say so, you know, right. you know, shame on you for doing that. Right. Um, it isn't just a no, don't do that. It in, it it generates within the um, and uh, Alan Shore talks about shame as um, it's an act of implosion. You know, if rage is an explosion, if that's an anger, okay. that if that's an emotion that goes this way, shame does the opposite. It's an implosion. And a, a tactical implosion allows you to be able to, to generate a corrective action and to be um, – um, so there is some utility in this. Some of what we're calling cancel culture may be the necessary shame that the individual needs to have and we all need to have. I mean there was a time when – um, let's take the blackface as an example. Right. And I remember, this is an actual story. Okay. Uh, when I was in graduate school, oh, here we go. Um, my wife decided that we were going to go as the Mod Squad. Yes. Remember the Mod Squad? Yeah, the Mod Squad. Now, mod that squad. takes us back a while. It does. Um, but uh, was it three people, I think, in the Mod Squad? Yeah, they were. I, I think there were three or four. I can't remember. They, okay. they were, were going to be, it was some friends of us, and she was going to be the woman, and, and she wanted me to be Link. Link is a black guy. He's a black guy. Yeah. And, you know, and she bought me all this okay. stuff. And she also well, it's been nice doing this podcast. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun and uh, <laughs> wish just, everyone well. Well, there, there are pictures. We go. But, and so she brought me the outfit. She brought me an afro, all this sort of stuff. And then she also brought me makeup for blackface. Okay. Still, and, could, you could purchase it back in there. Well, you still can, I think. Uh, yeah, I guess but, you can. Uh, okay. But she, right. So she bought it. And she goes, this is going to be really fun. And uh, I remember I'm getting ready, and I already felt guilty putting the afro on. But I was like, yeah. okay, this is so far not, you know. But then there was the blackface, and I was like, something about this felt wrong. It, it felt, felt like wrong. And I, at the time, I really couldn't necessarily articulate it, but I was like. Why didn't those politicians <laughs> have that same reaction? Well, uh, that we I thought to myself, about... you, know, you know, I think this is fun and I, I don't mean it in a, in, a, in, a, in a hateful way right but I was fully aware that there were going to be other folks at this party some of them are African American right and, and a white guy walking in in blackface might make them uncomfortable yes <laughs> and I thought to myself and I, I had pressure from several no go ahead no one's going to care and I was like you uh, know and no. I remember putting it down and not doing it okay <laughs> man I am <laughs> I, I, I am entirely relieved at that I want to get to that point uh, we're back on the air I want to thank you people <laughs> continue to watch no uh, no I, I, I literally but but I, if, if that had happened five years earlier may not have been I might have done might something have done different so, that's, right, that's I, right I think there was that there was enough shame there was enough movement at that point for me to feel something about that. Right.
yeah. and to be able to say, you know what, I don't think this is the best idea. Wow. Yeah, I love that example, and I appreciate you sharing that because um, I, that's the question I have when I see some of these things coming out in the news with the politicians. I mean, why didn't they think about that? I, we've been knowing this for mm. d- decades that that's not – I mean, somewhere you have to have that reaction. But, again, maybe they had the people, like you said, you had were there, the well, ones but, that spoke up said, no, no problem, go but ahead here's and Here's the thing. This. I think I had and a profession. I had gone through enough multicultural classes, and I had uh, – I had – I had already understood the notion of systemic racism, you know. Right. Like people will often say things, well, you know, if a black guy puts on white face, you're not going to upset. And you're right. like, hold on a second. You're really not thinking about this clearly. Right. Uh, right. It, it isn't that I am a racist person and I'm doing a racist thing. At its worst, it is I am part of a system that allows me to walk and breathe in a way that other folks don't. I certainly I, – I mean, still, I'm a straight white male – there are lots of things that I have. The, I I can walk into most stores, and no one's going to bother me. Right. Simply no security guard of, is going to follow I, you through have, the store or whatever. That when happens, I purchased, right? when, when my you know, but we we had a little difficulty with infertility, so we thought we weren't going to have a kid. So I purchased a ridiculous car, a bright yellow Porsche. Yes. And nice um, car. I uh, I drive. I have never gotten a ticket in that car. Okay. And I drive like a maniac. I know that. And I think part of the reason why I've, I've been never in got, one, one yeah, time, yeah. I was pinned back to the seat for and a I long period of time. And I think it's because when yes. they see a middle-aged white guy go by in a yellow Porsche, they don't bother him. Yes. But I suspect if That's I had systemic if I had been gone, a, yeah. a different race, I think this would have gone very differently. And that's what we mean by systemic racism. There there's right, something right. in place that allows me to have I hate to use that word because people don't like it, a privilege otherwise others wouldn't. Right. And it's not like and I could speak to all the ways in which I've been underprivileged. I come from, you know, um, um Appalachia, relatively economically deprived area. I mean, I could count all the things that are not sure. privileged about me, but right. I still, my place in the order of things, just by just by some sort of genetic lottery that I won, right. allows me this. Right. Right. And so I, I think that there's a role for shame in being able to dismantle and to be able to move society in some way. And uh, maybe, maybe if we could find a way to be able to experience the emotion of th- shame and allow us to generate some thought... We might not move too quickly, and maybe that allows us to be able to think. And this SNL guy, I I mean, heck. Well, actually, I'll tell you, the um, Mm -hmm. Trudeau. It's not Gary Trudeau, because that's a guy who do who. So, what's the Trudeau guys in Canada? Uh, uh, president of Canada. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 let's call him. Um, let's call him Wilfred. Up. Wilfred Trudeau. No, no Wilfred. <laughs> we only have one. That's beyond. <laughs> that's right. Okay. okay. So uh, it's beyond me. But uh, <laughs> but a boom. But a boom. Yeah, we, so. we're going to get a trap set in here with a drummer at one point for these. But, but um, not, not yet. Uh, his response to this. Yes, I know. And we're and talking I, Canada. I, think, I know it's still yes. sort of in motion, but he was able to say. It was stupid. I literally shouldn't have done that. What I did was, you know, in re- in hindsight, right. good God, that was a d- dumb thing to do. Yes. And you know what? I've done it before. There's some other times, too. If you look, you're going to find it. Yeah. Shouldn't have done it. Okay. And I need to rethink that. You know what? And to be used as a platform to say, I think that makes all of us need to think. Because it certainly was not my intention to hurt people, but look what I did. And we said, all need to think about this. We need to think about that if we're making jokes, doing that sort of stuff, we need to have some consideration of its potential impact. It's not a matter that you should shut someone down. It's a matter of let's think about our impact on other people when we do things. And I think maybe, I mean, this all could go to heck in a handbasket, but yeah. I think he was able to answer that in a way that may have proved fruitful, not just to salvage political career, but the possibility of having a white middle-aged man who is obviously privileged i mean his his father was former they have prime ministers up there uh, i don't I think know so, something like yeah, that you know. yeah and for him to be able to to in front of to be able to to to, to own this um that may be a wonderful thing yeah so so you've been saying i mean this is a uh, this is uh, we're we're experiencing growing pains in a way because this is such a huge issue to our society it permeates everything and now we're really getting this um sort of struggle that we're trying to come 
through to get to a good place in this. Mm-hmm. And these are the growing pains that are well, causing us problems we've in your when we have this cancel culture mm-hmm. take charge of uh, something well, like that. If, 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 if we, if we want to own this and say there is such a thing as cancel culture, we see this notion, we've talked in here before about the difference between assimilation and accommodation. Learning at an accommodative level, learning that requires us to, to rewrite and re, rewire the internal maps we have, always come with some minimal trauma. Yeah. They require conflict. They require pain. That's just They just do. Struggle and suffering, you know, the, uh, one of my favorite quotes for, in, for folks who come to therapy, our goal is not to stop suffering, but to get people to suffer better. Right. There is something about the pain that we feel that grow us. And as a society, we're in this place. There, this is a place of growth and struggle. And sometimes maybe we overdo it and some people get hurt. Some people we underdo it and people continue to be hurt in ways that we want to stop. But mm. we're in the process of finding some balance in this. And I, th- there's an inherent struggle. There's, there's, there's an inherent pain in that. You know, I was thinking when we have the um, the, the the white uh, cancel culture folks coming at or someone and feeling more pain than the actual victim does, it's all it's overcompensation. It's mm. over empathic. Is it too much well, empathy? Is there such a thing as too much? Empathy I would argue with this, that it's, it's too far. It's projective in a way because okay. what happens is I can I can take my own um, discomfort, my own. Um, 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 uh, I don't use the word racist, but maybe, maybe we could say there are things inside of me that I won't have to own. I can put it in someone else and then burn them in effigy or burn them literally. It right. literally doesn't have to, you know, to be able to, uh, it, it doesn't allow me to have to really own the parts of me that may f- think those racist Asian jokes are funny or, right. you know, and I, so I think that there's something truly projective about it mm-hmm. and that lends itself to um, um, it becomes despairingly and depressingly only assimilative. It just allows us to continue. And Zizek right, would say, right, and right. this will be his criti- criticism of what he calls political correct culture, is that the problem is, that it, it, he talks about this with the new things with straws, mm-hmm. and he says, you know, the problem is not that um, we, sh- we shouldn't be thinking about straws, but the problem right. is, that's all we'll think about, and then we'll stop. Right. We're not okay. thinking about the fact that as individuals, we certainly have an impact. But the vast majority of impact on the environment comes from corporations, comes from countries. Sure. And so what happens is we all decide to stop selling straws. As an individual, yeah. And we okay. don't in Maybe. any way hold accountable the system and the, the, the other things in place it's that need to be challenged. Much, yeah, it's causing much more harm. Yeah, and so his, co- his concept is, okay, the problem is, so, okay, we, uh, you know, we, um, we uh, get this comedian fired for telling uh, racist jokes, racist Asian jokes. But we don't think about anything about the Asian countries that we have subjugated for our iPhones or that <laughs> there are people right. being ground under the dust all around us to be able to prop up our first world culture. Nobody asks those questions because we're focused on this. So his idea would be you have to be careful that um, uh, we, we can be stuck in thinking we're doing something when really all we're doing is just the smallest thing while the other problems continue. And those are systemic. Wow. Um, okay. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he's, he's got a, a great point. And the idea of projection really is about the person doing the cancel culture mm-hmm. idea. It's really about them mm-hmm. in some ways, boosting up their ego or getting their mm-hmm. 15 seconds of fame. Or well, whatever. I mean, in, 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 in he, he's, a, he's, he's a Marxist, so he, his criticism would also be that there's something inherent in capitalism itself. There's something inherent in unchecked growth, this notion of the movement and the, the, the generation and selling of products that lends itself to once somebody has a place at the table, we, uh, we take away their teeth and we sell them things. Mm-hmm. So someone who comes outside the table has a truth to bring us. Uh, they are bringing something that we need to hear, but instead we find a way to get them to, to assimilate and w- whatever whatever minimal and necessary they trauma they bring to us we find a way to cancel that may be the thing that's canceled and potentially in quote cancel culture mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. he uses a lot to he talks about um transgendered individuals 
He says, the problem is our rush and move to suddenly normalize this and place at the table keeps us from thinking about there's a truth they bring to us. There is, we've all bought into notions of gender. We've all bought into notions of, of being gendered at, at a Western level, for instance, that we're not questioning at all. That right. there's, there's something about, you know, there, there is something inherent in their experience that is universal. And that universal experience we need more of, not less of. And instead, suddenly, he says, you know, suddenly you'll, you'll see transgender individuals represented in, in uh, Gap commercials or uh, they're eating a Big Mac. And the problem is, okay, it's good that suddenly that, you know, that there is representation so individuals who've been suffering alone all this time now can see themselves reflected back. And mm-hmm. that's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's not so wonderful if, if it suddenly so normalizes that we don't get a sense of the truth they have to bear on us and what they may bring. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I'm glad you mentioned the advertising uh, thing, too. And I, I would like for us maybe to talk about that in a future show. But uh, the advertising sometimes is on the cutting edge. Those adver- uh, the big agencies that are putting this ad up to get more dollars in the capitalism mm-hmm. culture here. Um, or maybe doing a, a, a service to bring those people out well, and, and those kind of things. I know it's a profit margin there for sure, but... Well, Marx talks about this when he, he talked about, uh, he quoted Shakespeare, that under capitalism, all that's solid melts in the air. And, uh, you know, the person who um, said that um, capitalism was the greatest invention of mankind was Marx because he saw suddenly we had this tool that could generate, it could level things, and it could begin to melt systems and institutions in such a way that we could melt them down and then, re- and then recast them. There was a possible ability of moving from these, this rigid feudalism to, um, to uh, the liberal democracy that we have, but we have to keep melting and casting. That there is, that that's, that's not, and his idea, broadly speaking from, you know, there's lots of different variations of communism and whatever your thoughts on that are all. But the idea is that slowly but surely it goes from a rigid structure to we're all in it together. And the right. whole idea behind, you know, at, at its best, and there are things that are not so good, but at its best it's the notion that how do we think about ourselves as a, as a collective, that we're all in this together, and that what do we need to do together, you know? And right. Again, Zizek's criticism of the straw thing may be that it it throws it back on the individual and away from us, thinking about that we're all on this together. The great ship Earth is going to yes. is, is has all of us on it. Brings us to the yeah. climate change issue yeah, too. And yeah, that's, that we've uh, got to be together. Greta, on that one. What is what's your last name? Third. third? Oh, uh, Thurberg. Thurberg. Sorry? Greta Thurberg. Yeah. Which, by the way, lots of people upset about that. She uh, sailed the boat. She arrived here, and um, if you haven't seen her, uh, that video of her, you need to watch it. Uh, pretty incredible. So maybe another step in the process of getting us to pay attention to the planet uh, for our future, for it's our children, and so there's forth. There's a quote cool so, from Zizek. Really interesting, but a lot of controversy from a lot of people, too. So well, well Zizek talks about, he, he had a quote for about, about Thurberg that uh, came out a couple of days ago, and he thought that, you know, he's an advocate of, of, of a form of violence. He okay. says that, um, that the time is not to, to for accommodation and compromise. The time is now for a scream. And that he, f- he felt that there was an important amount of anger in her. And that she represents, of, you know, how dare you. Right. right. This and, is my future. Yeah. That kind of thing. So, yeah. and, it, and in that the way, tears it, in her eyes. Right. Time. And yeah. it demands something as opposed to, you know, a softness or a, a, a call to some sort of compromise. And even said that, you know, the fact that she didn't have um, a set list of things we need to do, she didn't come with a um, with an itinerary. Right. That's actually, for him, from his perspective, good because there should be an explosion first. There should be, it should rock things. And then, then, um, he, he talks about, um, ever seen that movie V for Vendetta? Um, it's got yes, that, um, ago. It's, good. What's, uh, it's got that Natalie Merchant. No, no, she was, she's Portman. She, Portman, yeah. Natalie yeah. Merchant was, okay. was the singer from 10,000 Maniacs. Okay. Yeah. Remember those guys? 10, uh, obscure Maniacs? reference. <laughs> <ago>. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Natalie Portman. And she was in it. And Zizek has a famous statement, because you know, at the end of the film, there, everybody like puts on the mask, and there's all this sort of revolution. He said, actually, the most important thing is the next day, right. because something big has happened. 
how do you sustain the necessary violence of that event? How does it move forward in a way that is that is a um, that we are um, um, what's the term uh, uh, Badu uses? It's you use it in marriage. You are not devotion, but um, ah, I'll, I'll think of it. Okay. We have to maintain our inve- fidelity. We have yes. to maintain okay. our fidelity to the event. So there's this violent rupture, and then we have to maintain fidelity to it. In some ways, Bud- Badu talks about this, that love is like that too. Love is a violent thing. It suddenly rips the world apart, and there's one person above all else that you have this level of investment, even above and beyond yourself, and it is a violence, and it is a divine violence. And then after, what we're called for is to say yes to the person we love every single day. Every time we see them, every time we wake up, we're, there is a call to fidelity. And if we do not answer that call, if we become uh, distracted or we begin to say no instead, distraction is usually the, the greater crime, then <laughs> we've no longer allowed ourselves to continue to grow with the necessarily viol- necessary violence of that event. So, right. So it's really important that these are not just event, isolated events and now we go on to uh, things as normal, but we, we continue to pay attention require, to them and do something yeah, better. Just like a, they require the work, the, the, the truth always demands something of us and will continue to. When uh, evangelical ministers talking about that can, when you've been convicted by the truth, you can't go back. Right. And if, in fact, that's a definition of evil, knowing the truth but going against it. Uh, that's an also a Bedouin notion. I'm going to be uh, doing an, an ethics uh, keynote address oh, yeah. for the Georgia Counseling Association in January. And that's oh, going to be my thing. We're going to talk a lot about this Badu. They don't know what to, they have no idea what they're getting into. No, they don't. And I'm, I need to send a message to that group just to warn them ahead <laughs> of time. Not yet. Uh, yes, I yes. want to make sure they're ready for this. Uh, and the other hand, that when the entire audience is silent and mm-hmm. looking at you after you've made mm-hmm. that comment usually I, I see be. people like uh, masses of folks with pitchforks and torches yes that's usually what happens usually that's <laughs> and, and, I can, I, and then I, at I some totally point i'm chased into a uh, a, a, a tower and they start you know and then i oh you that's yeah. how frank that, that's a movie ended. that's frank that's, yeah so no that's, that's how not, it ended yeah but but it could be it could be interesting to say all right we'll uh, we'll come back to that at, at cer- certain point all right so let's let's uh kind of summarize a little bit here this cancel culture um mm-hmm and what's happening because uh, it's this projection process that people, white privilege in some cases, I guess that's what we're talking about, uh, kind of coming to the aid of someone else Mm -hmm. in a different culture and then going overboard and causing Let's expand the categories. Maybe part of it is this projective, um, a a disowning by uh, uh, those in the, um, the, let's say, uh, the privileged white folk who are, who are, that's that's part of it. Part of it could also be individuals. You know, I mentioned pitchforks and, and torches. There are people who've been kept out the table long enough that they're angry, right? And maybe some of their anger is incendiary, and it needs to be channeled. It needs. It's in some ways, it's the the difference between um, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. You know what is mm-hmm. you know what 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 is the path we take with it? So maybe that's a category as well. Right. And okay. uh, and maybe the third category could be there are individuals, maybe some of them who are who are afraid for various reasons, who come up with this this idea of cancel culture as a way, and even the the, the name, the definition, is a way to delegitimize the the movements that we're seeing that are you know the Me Too movements and the growing of society in ways right. that are that are necessary. And. Um, and maybe there's a, a category uh, to, to quote uh, 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 the Dark Knight who just want to see things burn. There's a, we see mm-hmm. this troll culture. So there are mm-hmm. folks who just see a fire and want to yes. throw things on it just to get it to burn brighter. Right. So maybe, and there may be more categories than just yeah. those. Yeah. But it, there's a complexity here. And what I think we're trying to demonstrate in, in this moment is the opposite of what Bion talks about when we don't think. How to think this. How to be okay. Let's look at the complexity of this. Try to find as many vertices as we can. Okay. Try to be able to allow ourselves to be discomfort, to be to suffer in not rushing to any certainty. And then right. if we can stay in that state. Now, that's the parallel, I think, with therapy. Part of what happens when we generate the right holding space in therapy is the individual can suffer just enough 
to be able to think their suffering. There's no too quick movement to to get rid of this through action, mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. rid of it by just some sort of black and white thinking. Quick it is this. Something, yeah. To be able to think about it. If someone sure. like someone came into the other day in my office and they were taught the first thing they said is, you know, I've got ADHD. Not this it doesn't mean that they don't have that. <laughs> but they came in and it's they were in a place of despair. I can't focus and I never will. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the medication they gave me doesn't work. Nothing seems to work. So our ability to create a space where they could bring this in, we could suffer with it a little, chew on it a little, and then begin to think about it. And as we begin to think about it, it begin to expand. They begin to talk about their marital conflict. They begin to talk about some of the financial concerns they have. They begin to talk about their family history. And suddenly this one thing that seemed, uh, at, for a brief moment, became many things, right. all of them with their own sort of uh, flavor, a color of suffering. And once we expand that, then we can begin to think about it. And then we can begin to say, well, no wonder you can't focus. Look how overwhelmed you are. Look mm -hmm. at every time you pick mm -hmm. up a textbook. It's, it's supposed to be the thing that lifts you out of this pit you're in. It's supposed to be the thing that cuts your chains. It's supposed to be the thing that if you don't make A's in, then, one, then, the, then the family who said you could never do this are going to tell you that, you, you know, that this was pointless. That, so it's suddenly, you know, and, and in doing that, we begin to, we begin to, it, it, it no longer has the weight or pressure it had before, and the person can move just slightly differently. They can be a little more agile. They can, they can duck and weave just a little as opposed to a weight around their neck that just sort of sinks them. Right. We need to uh, apply this therapy thing to the nation at, at large, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've said that before. Everybody mm -hmm. might need a little therapy. But what is that? The other line from, um, well, that's actually from uh, the original Batman, Tim Burton. This town needs an enema. That's not, that's not <laughs> what, uh, th that's not where we were and where <laughs> we needed to go. So, uh, I don't know, <laughs> part, of, part of my job here, I don't know what my job is. Something to think of it. It's, uh, it's Jack Nicholson made a good joker. Am I wrong? Yeah. He did. He made a good Joker. Well, yeah, of course yeah. he did. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. Yeah, that was uh, great. Well, this movie coming out, The Joker, is that the title yeah, of Yeah, Jack movie? Nicholson's in that. Is he in there? No, no, no. But, uh, a, but the new one's You know, it's Danny out. DeVito. Not Batman, by the way. I'm trying to... Uh, yes, what? Danny DeVito. He's in that, right? Isn't he the Joker? No. Uh, he, pl he played the penguin in <laughs> oh, one of the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I got to bring you up to speed on some of this. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, I think... Uh, what, what was our point? All right, so we talked about the cancel culture. And that's kind of got into some very interesting um, uh, points today. And I appreciate everything we talked about. Any final words on this, uh, yeah, this yeah. idea? What about the people who are in this cancel culture? Culture, what would you say to them? Well, you, 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 what, what, what I would say is it's a time to think. And that, uh, again, I'll quote Zizek again. There's a famous thing by him. He said that, um, he said two things. He says, um, uh, don't act, think, and um, resistance is surrender. And uh, both those mean that huh? there is a way in which we have to allow ourselves the necessary amount of suffering before we do anything. Because it can be painful to think. And yes. so if there is any legitimacy that, there's, that there is such a thing as cancel culture, then it may be that people are acting before they think, that they are discharging the necessary suffering. Um, if this SNL guy was fired because of the racist jokes, and I, I, don't, I haven't heard the jokes, and I, right, I, I'm, right, I'm making yeah, all sorts of assumptions either. here, but if they were, what if before we did anything, we allowed ourselves as individuals and a collective to think about this? And mm -hmm. think about what mm -hmm. should be done. And maybe right. it's enough to give this guy a public shaming and then allow him to keep his job. But he's, you know, don't be doing that. Just like the, the child. The mom doesn't, you know, doesn't kill the child. Right. There's and a, there's a shaming. The and yeah, what right. often happens is, and Shore makes this point, that shame is that there is both first the shaming and then there's the rescue. The mm -hmm. mom says, shame on you for doing that. And then the child cries, and then the mom picks the child up and sues them. So Shame's point in this is it's a point in the narrative that generates the, uh, the potential for changing behavior rapidly. But there's a second step that we got to think about, and that second step is what do we do next? And maybe that's what I might apply to this. Maybe it's not enough for us to simply excise certain folks, but to say what we need to say, allow the folks in the collective to speak their mind, 
but then move to be human and kind in some way that all folks concerned might be able to be better for what happened. All right, I like it. That's a great place to end. Thank you, Dan. I also want to thank our producer, Dr. Tom Hackett, at the helm over there. So, Mm -hmm. uh, hey, we'll see you Mm -hmm. next time. Next time you should wear a shirt, though. Please. And pants. Yes.